werewolves. They are hated by vampires, they are hated by mages, they are hated by changelings as well as other hunters. They are also hated by other werewolves. Today's video is going to be an overview of all of the werewolf clans in Werewolf the Apocalypse, and then there will be deep dives in the future. I will also be addressing the White Howlers finally, so look forward to that. Now if we get started in alphabetical order, that leads us off with the Black Furies everyone's favorite feminist group. This tribe holds the right that women are worthy of respect, and honestly, that is something that should be more commonplace. No Black Fury will suffer under a male master. They view this more from an equality perspective, but it's really easy for them to fall into the all men bad death to men. There are definitely some with that attitude in this tribe, but they do not all possess this same thought process. The whole tribe is supposed to be a representation of the Wrath of Woman. They are the daughters of Luna as Artemis, the great huntress of the moon, and their history traces back to Greece, where they were appointed defenders of the wild. The Bonars are everyone's favorite mongrels. Their traditions are very chaotic from the outsider's perspective, but their septs are surprisingly democratic. Many of their rights and magical items have been scavenged from… who knows where. It's probably best you don't answer that question. They have been cultural influences within major cities as well, pushing the stories of urban legends. And this tribe also seeks out the bizarre and the strange. This can also be seen in the totems that they choose to represent or choose to follow. They are not pretty, but they get the job done. Their whole tribe motto is whatever works. The Children of Gaia have origins going back to the start of the Impergium. They were one of the few tribes that were against the mass culling of humanity. But the tribe did not become the formal peacemakers they are known as today until the Impergium ended. That is when they officially took on the role as peacekeepers. As a result, the Children of Gaia have integrated themselves into human politics as well as the Guru Nation politics, and this is an area where they really thrive. I mean, they thrive in it as much as a werewolf can. Sometimes the thought of nuance just is incomparable to a werewolf mind. But they do actively promote their agenda of peace, tolerance, and acceptance. Before we move on to my favorite werewolf tribe overview, if you're enjoying the video today, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button, as that lets me know that you enjoyed this and tells YouTube to go share it with some more people. If you want to get more videos like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification. The Fianna are familiar with grief, joy, love, hate, life, and death. They embrace them all. This particular tribe of Guru, they are patrons of the spirit totem Stag, and they embrace all of the earthly delights, the pleasures of the flesh, if you will. Wine, women, and song. They are the Guru Nation's storytellers, and although the stories that they may tell are based on true events, they are very likely embellished for glory and entertainment. This has earned them the title of lore keepers and bards of the Guru Nation, passing down the oral history. The Geta Fenris, also known as the Fenrir, they get their origins in Europe. They were once Germanic tribes as well as Nordic raiders. They are also very likely the reason that such violent tales and violent history are part of that region. The Galliards of this tribe, they recount the war stories, the triumph against impossible odds, the eternal glory that is to be found only on the field of battle. They have their stories of Ragnarok and the coming apocalypse, and they are ready for it. The Glasswalkers, they are a little different. They are the only tribe to have abandoned their ancestry and their historical ways in favor of new technology. They prefer an urban life as opposed to one of the woods, and their style tends to blend shamanism and technology together. Glasswalkers believe that nature and urban sprawl can coexist, and throughout the ages they have even changed their tribal name as history has hit some major milestones. They don't care that their reputation is pretty low within the Guru Nation. They are not willing to try to go back to their old ways because they see the value in the new. Now, in very stark contrast to the Glasswalkers, you have the Red Talons. This tribe likes to sing their tales around the campfire of when humanity 
feared the werewolves, when it feared the dark. They desire to go back to a time around the Impergium. They want a new Impergium. They feel that if humanity's population had been kept under control, Gaia wouldn't be in such serious threat as it is right now. Their kinfolk and their tribe has been diminishing over the years, and this causes them great sadness, great anger, which they harness as very powerful war beasts. The Shadow Lords believe that it is the Strong's duty to lead, and it is the Weak's duty to be led. They do this through intense political games as well as just general show of strength. The Shadow Lords have a very rigid hierarchy, and the hierarchy that they follow they promote within the Guru Nation itself. They usually cause a lot of problems everywhere they go, and their presence is quite divisive everywhere. No tactic is off limits to a Shadow Lord, so they are not trusted very well. They have been known to work with some vampires in the past, and it's very likely that they have some backroom dealings with other vampire clans. This definitely makes them look corrupt to other members in the Guru Nation. There is no denying that the Shadow Lord's methods are cruel and underhanded, but they do get results. The Silent Striders are a little bit of a different story. They are very nomadic. They are restless and they are a haunted tribe. Acting as the Guru Nation's messengers and scouts, they are always searching, always listening, and bringing news and stories between Karens. Even in today's modern age of electronics, it's very difficult to pin down a silent strider. They prefer to leave as little digital footprint as possible, preferring to deliver messages in person. The silent striders are almost always welcome in any Karen, but when they do show up, it's usually not with good news. The first tribe, and thus the most important tribe, at least if you were to ask a Silver Fang, that's what they would tell you, they are descended from great monarchs, fantastic heroes, and they will let you know about it. They are the self-proclaimed leaders of the Guru Nation, although not everyone agrees. They believe that their origin can be traced back to the first wolf, the progenitor wolf, and that their human ancestry is of the most noble blood. Throughout history, the Silver Fangs have been on the front lines of any battle or any war that has been fought, and their prideful nature is not ironically a source of pride for them, however it's probably this tribe's greatest weakness. But don't let a Silver Fang hear you calling them weak, it'll be the last thing you say. The smallest tribe in the Guru Nation is probably the least understood. This would be the Stargazers. This particular tribe follows some ideas that have tended to fly in the face of what it means to be a werewolf. They actively pursue learning through meditation, philosophy, lucid dreaming, any way that they can master their inner self to calm the storming raging beast within. They seek the middle ground between wolf and humanity, rage and gnosis, the material world and the spiritual world. They seek something that werewolves are generally not good at. Balance. In the days before the Europeans even reached the Americas, the Uctena acted as the wise older brother of the three tribes that made up the Pure Ones. The Uctena specialized in gathering mystical knowledge, and they preferred the lands in Southern America where there was lots of rivers and water. When the Europeans arrived, the Pure Ones, their lives changed forever. Two of the tribes were able to adapt even though they still suffered heavy losses. Unfortunately, one tribe was not, and it was sadly lost. The Uctena eventually formed strong bonds with other tribes that had been oppressed as they have, and those who favored their more animalistic traditions. If there's one tribe who knows anything about hatred, that would be the Wendigo. They were besieged by the worm. They were betrayed by their very own nation. They lost so much when the Europeans came to the Americas. Though their numbers are low, they have not forgotten and they have not forgiven. They are angry. They are cold and calculated. Their cannibal spirit of winter has taught them much and they revere their totem and try to emulate him in any way they can. Don't piss off a Wendigo. That leaves us with the last and final tribe, the White Howlers. I know many of you have been asking me to cover them, so here we go. Bitches be dead. 
I will be updating my werewolf playlist as time goes on, so please click here to view a little bit more. Thank you to all of my patrons who have continued to support me throughout this move. All of your support, it greatly helps me continue to make videos like this. If you would like to support me on Patreon, links will be in the description below. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.